Hi everyone and uh, welcome back. This is uh, Teaching Talk 12 which is focused on integration of the classroom with student services, issues related to guides, guided pathways, and also the overall student experience. So I just wanted to mention that this uh, teaching talk actually was originally scheduled for another date and due to a series of presentations I have, one of which is on guided pathways and which I'll be referring to in this uh, presentation today, I had to reschedule and then I was um, had some confusion about um, trying to offer it during the holiday and the reason was I'm actually working on Monday which is the uh, President's weekend uh, getting ready to go down to Sacramento or being down in Sacramento and so I was going to have some time in the hotel room, the Wi-Fi, and I was going to do it there but I thought because of that confusion and just the issue of exempt versus non-exempt employees I decided what the heck I'll just do it as a static version here so unfortunately you won't be able to chime in live as it's going but as I'll talk about at the end you can include your comments here on YouTube and we can have additional conversations likewise I wanted to mention as always if you go to ltccteachinglearning.com click on workshops this has all the teaching talks what you'll see at the top is the upcoming ones at the bottom uh, when you get to the header there, archived, these have all the videos. So the one we just completed, Teaching in the Age of Social Media, you can click on there and watch it. There'll be one uh, coming up as well tomorrow on uh, differences between DE, face-to-face, -face, and ISP teaching. If you ever want a handout or a link, I'll usually refer to it here. If there is a handout, you'll scroll all the way to the bottom, and then that handout will be available for you such as the one for Teaching Talk 11. So sometimes that will frame some of the conversations. Another thing I wanted to mention is we will have another go um, go around on this focus on Guided Pathways. So on March 3rd, which I also had to reschedule from February, we will have another conversation about Guided Pathways. So I feel like this is a prep for that and then Teaching Talk 13 will actually be a focus um, that you can engage in as we'll meet uh, virtually and as normal in E100 from, on Tuesday 12 to 12.45. So just wanted to clarify that a little bit in case there was any confusion and I apologize because I realized that um, uh, the thing kept getting rescheduled so hopefully we're, we're set now. So watch this and then if you have comments please include those comments and or questions at the bottom here on YouTube. So I wanted to give you some background and actually I did a video quite a while ago on SEM Guided Pathways and Promise Let's turn on the volume there. Pretty extensive video, an hour and a half, and it looks really long, but the good news is you can click right here on the timestamp. There's actually a short version here, it's about 13 minutes long, and then the long version. So you can watch the first part and end there if you've had enough. At 13 minutes and 25 seconds, you're done. Otherwise, continue and you can watch it all the way through. So this was my way, really, of documenting the process of the college. You know, I'm a cultural anthropologist by training. I wrote my dissertation on being a, an employee trainer at a theme park. So I have a, lot, have a lot of experience with just organizational structures and communication, archiving, and researching and studying that. So it's, I think, part of my connection to just ethnography that this um, developed out of. So what you can do is look at this and then if you're interested just in SEM, click on that. And then once you do that, it's very nice because then the video goes to that spot. And this video is composed of a lot of different takes of me talking about strategic enrollment management, guided pathways, and promise. So there's a lot there, there to look at, but you can also um, pick and choose the parts that you want. So I wanted to mention that. That's a good place to start to give you a little bit of background about where the college has been. I'll, I'll give you the short version of that today, but if you want more in depth, there's a lot more imagery and information available there, a lot of graphics, um, a lot of handouts whenever possible. Try to include that as part of that process of really tracking for the institution, committing it to memory, that um, history of where we've been, and it allows us then and informs us in terms of where we're going later. So this is the part getting to this point, and you actually see right here the Tahoe Claire Strategic Enrollment Management document, which was one of many vital pieces in this project. And one of the things I want to say, and actually Brad, Allie, and I are getting prepared to go to Sacramento for the Career Ladders Project, presenting some of this information here, some additional information. 
we're showing like the bits and pieces and how everything fits together, but the truth is some of these are independent projects that will fit together but necessarily didn't have the same players or even some of the same entry points or endpoints or continuation points. So strategic enrollment and management as an example, you know, it's very key to for student success to have a clear schedule that can be navigated. It's important to have a catalog that is manageable. But that's a different project, if you will, than say what's happening with the Promise Program and building out cohorts and creating economic opportunities and cultural opportunities and integration in the social fabric of the campus and all that other good stuff. Guided Pathways, different set of players, different regional consortia and uh, advisors who helped us out than say um, our SEM coaches. Guided Pathways does have a component of, say, enrollment management, but it's also heavily focused on the student experience and how do students choose a major and how do they connect to career data and career workshops, like some of the opportunities I'll be talking about today. So the getting to this point part is interesting because I really see these as points of convergence but also divergence and ultimately it does something like this and in the end it creates something that's useful for students and hopefully also user-friendly for faculty, staff, administration, but it's always a process that's continuing. If you look at last year's board president, if you look at last year's superintendent president board goals and this year's, you see that sense of continuity and recognition by all those players, the um, president and the board, that it's not something you just do and finish. Uh, president Franco has always said, Promise is not something we just stop and pat ourselves on the back. Yeah, we did a good job with some of these projects, but it's about the next step and making sure student success is always on the radar. So I mentioned those goals. These are the 18-19 goals, and you can see that Meta Majors, Tahoe Clear, Promise were really those three that were key, although when you look at workforce housing development, and that would be the main one when you look at that one that also connects to the student experience as we'll get to with with housing initiatives and prosperity center and some of those connections from a collaborative sense so board goal for last year was to complete all these strategies and then what they always do is the next year typically at state of the college the president will present accomplishments strategies and then what were those outcomes great format um, didn't used to do this in the past as a college, and I think it really helps us keep these projects on the radar, and it lends legitimacy to us in what we're doing in our everyday lives. I mean, just today I was in a meeting for our CBC OEI grant, and these goals came up, and we said, hey, guess what? In the, not this year, but in 1920 goals, that commitment to quality DE instruction means that we can use that as a leveraging point to say, look, I know it's kind of, um, intense to think about changing your class over and improving its standards and focusing on some design um, issues or tactics, but the board and the president are really committed to it, so we have that buy-in across campus. So I think it's really key. Now, the images here, you recall there was a um, strategic session where faculty got together, and you could tell this was a Phyllis's group. I think they did a very visual version of this, where we tried to initially lay out, okay, how would you naturally group certain disciplines and all the groups had a, a chance at it and you could see different versions of this there were some creative ones there was one that had a Tahoe major which ultimately I think probably you know the Tahoe major we think of is wilderness education probably hospitality will have a feel for that and as Brad and others are redesigning Scott Valentine as well EVS the environmental technology sustainability stuff that really will have a Tahoe feel. So marketing probably is a Tahoe project, but um, in any case, you see these various versions and you get a sense of how faculty thought about creating meta majors from scratch. And there were other work days, of course. What we did after that was we said, let's take every single certificate and degree from the current catalog, not the one we're looking at in the Clemency group this year, but let's take it and see based on what we suggest, you know, at the time it was six and then eventually five meta majors, could we see those fitting into certain ones? And we hit certain points, for example, with geography. Does that fall under social science? Does that fall under STEM? Um, happens like in situations or history is another one. Um, Dr. Dirk and I, JD, argue a little bit about is it a social sciences and humanities? That obviously could be an interesting dynamic if you have one or two or three that maybe don't fit neatly, but I think ultimately what we did was we took these lists and I believe instruction office compiled a master sheet of this. And of course that can change over time. What then we, we talked about doing was 
creating pathways, we looked at the current three-year or two-year schedule. We worked in our meta major groups. We looked at the program mapper technology of Bakersfield College, which we're rolling out and should be presenting down at Career Ladders. It's a very cool uh, project just today here in mid-February for our CDC OEI meeting. We talked about that very tool and how that's going to be uh, working, and we did it specific to the criminal justice major because we're starting with the CTE disciplines. You can see um, Mandy and James are um, experts, or coaches for our SEM project. Here was another faculty day that I thought was really interesting where faculty talked about how they got involved in the majors they were. It was very expressive and kind of emotional and qualitative in nature, but I thought a very good, you know, feel-good experience that faculty shared in their experiences. So we have to pat ourselves on the back and the senior leadership team and others because really we're doing the work to create collaborative processes on campus relative to SEM, Guided Pathways, Promise, and other projects on the horizon, including CPC OEI. We've gotten more nimble as an organization. I believe we've gotten better at seeing that it's good to have kind of weird alignments of people and departments in some of these meetings that you typically wouldn't think of in the past. That kind of, you know, build the airplane as we fly kind of thing that the president talks about in some of his State of the College addresses, I think is really key because if you don't have that, if you don't have the um, strange bedfellow sometimes meeting in some of these contexts and processes, you're not going to get the same kind of creativity. It really is about creating projects from the ground up with players that often have diverse opinions on what things should look like. This is showing you our efforts with many of the counseling faculty to develop those first year pathways. Not an easy project. This was one of the hardest things I think some of you might agree with me where we worked on this and said, man, how do we decide whether you're going to take um, you know, magic and witchcraft or um, ethnic drumming or something like that. Like, how do you decide between these different classes? Some it made sense, right? Like, you think about your stats, you think about your English 103 requirements, where you maybe want to get those done because that sets the foundations for other more complex areas in STEM or in the humanities or in the social sciences. Often we don't have prereqs, but we can, in a sense, then, by being a little more prescriptive and programmatic in our scheduling and our pathways, for the first and the second year. We could do this via GE. We could, of course, do this by the meta majors. By being a little more prescriptive and programmatic, in a sense, we're creating quasi prereqs, right, without actually writing prereqs into the curriculum. You don't have to, the students can't be held to it, but if we're really saying, we want you to follow this sequence because our interest is in you getting out on time in two years or a little, you know, over two years possibly with the summer thrown in. Um, we really have it in the student's best interest in mind when we're coming up with these kinds of, of plans. And you can see a lot of it is numerical, but it also deals with just expected workload and anticipations about what is a good class to match with another class and then a setup for one quarter into the next. So I think kind of a cool effort stressing, and this is a, a key aspect here talking about instruction and student services, is really to increase linkages between the counseling faculty, between the library services, and classroom faculty and uh, other faculty, myself and Trevor, right, who have some classroom, foot in the classroom, but also in some other areas. Really important because I think in the past we sort of occupied or, or operated in silos and we didn't really have those conversations. Promise is another key example where we have, um, in some cases, last quarter, classroom faculty teaching at this quarter, Sarah Marquez, counseling faculty, but let's make opportunities to really increase the faculty to faculty connections between student services. Um, the library media services and our full-time and part-time faculty in all the various disciplines of the meta majors. So really great opportunities there in the future. This particular process here, I always like to show, and, and quite a few folks, Diane, Tara, uh, Katie Bailey, were involved in a process of interviewing folks, graphic design firms. I always give the number of 40 hours we spent. It was a long time. Um, a lot of this went back and forth with uh, President DeFranco and Michelle Brisden because we were interested in seeing what exactly would these icons look like, how could they be used as branding communication devices. These are the iterations, so you can follow this in order. So it, this was um, Melanie Chu and others in our meta major group just using like clip art icons, what we could possibly design. And then moving to this, a honeycomb structure, which actually we came back to today, Michelle Risden was mentioning in our CBC OEI meeting today that if we do the, the digital badging, which we'll get to later, we could actually have these 
honeycomb structures coming back. So for example, um, if this is uh, one of our meta majors, uh, it would be maybe business hospitality leadership, you could pull out the specific major. So a business major would have a spreadsheet and that would be it. And if you had wilderness, it would be a carabiner and so forth. So that may actually come back. And our a graphic design firm I thought was wonderful to work with and they just came up with some amazing work. We've heard through the president and others that we go to statewide meetings that people really like the pop of these, they like the appeal, the color branding and so forth. So this was the process over time, right? And eventually get down here to something like this. So very iterative and I always emphasize this in statewide presentations because people think you just a either go find some clip art and clip art doesn't work we mentioned to Dan our designer we want something unique we want an aesthetic appeal to it we don't want it to look just like clip art we like sort of badging um, or kind of the the crest the heraldry kind of stuff like a Harry Potter thing and we also like the idea that there would be a lot encapsulated in any one of these but yet still giving something distinctive that really honed the student in so I like that there's a key icon on the bottom and then uh, more specific ones on the top. Really nice design. So the idea is taking these forward, we can then leverage them as a branding vehicle through marketing, and then also our catalog, as you'll see here in a second. So this is the brand integration guide. This tells you all the colors, which is really key. Just today in the CBC OEI meeting, we were talking about if we're going to do digital badging, we can't have every program making their own little badges, and some have purple and some have blue. There has to be you know clear and consistent branding and design messaging and any work I've done on branding and my consulting work I always talk about the fact that you have to have consistency across the brand and across product lines across divisions so if Disney is developing something there has to be synergy between branding and color schemes and of course storytelling and narrative between their toy division their um, animation division their theme park division and so forth so really key that we do that in our own branding and marketing senses there's a t-shirt design, you see them from the catalog and also the uh, schedule. And the schedule then also has some, quote, real students in real um, dress or settings that would also replicate, you know, that future career looking piece of Guided Pathways and Meta Majors. So great work by all folks involved in this. I think it turned out great. We have also had really good participation from our three or four representatives from our regional consortium in terms of Guided Pathways. They've been wonderful working with. You see a meeting here where they joined us. And then we've been really key about defining goals for every year. So this is, these are goals of 1920 that hopefully we can take forward and again build on in terms of that process, not envisioning an endpoint, but seeing more to come in the future. This is really cool. I've been involved with uh, Melanie Chu, uh, Laura Salinas, J.D. Dirk, who's, who's the lead in this, myself. Um, others are coming on board, I believe Beth uh, in psychology. Uh, Rowing to America. Um, and it's a project basically of readers theater. So we're having auditions for this. And the idea is that students rehearse uh, for the parts. They're assigned the parts. And then we uh, rehearse them over time. And we present these. And this will be presented in April. We'll give you all the dates on that. But this is one of many opportunities out there to use our meta majors. And this is coming out of our specific meta major as a way of connecting students, in this case, to multicultural diversity issues. Future meta major events will also have a very key career focus. So I encourage you, if you have other events out there, send them my way and then we can start to publicize some of those. I wanted to mention the SEM uh, project, and at our presentation, Ali uh, Bissonette will be focusing on this. The team was very diverse, and one of the keys about this was the clarity of the lake should be mirrored in our processes on campus. So registering for classes and getting an education at the college should be as easy and clear to see through as the waters of Lake Tahoe. So really nice metaphor, and this was a great uh, brochure that was developed for that project. And I will say, as I said earlier, SEM, I think, played a vital role in setting up a lot of the foundations, the skeletal kind of architecture of the building. And the building is maybe what we're doing at Guided Pathways and some of the Promise initiatives as well. We've also had opportunities to almost like, I don't want to say beta test because, you know, there's a full-time um, Katie Myers, full-time grant lead, there's a staff, there are, are core components, uh, core people to our meetings, as you can see from one of our bigger grant meetings, um, folks from marketing, counseling, all over campus, really different departments. But this is a nice like testing ground or almost beta testing for some of the things we're going to do in the future. Just today we had a conversation, how do we institutionalize it? What does it look like? 
there are budgetary implications to doing all these projects into the future. We're grant funded year one, but once the end of June hits, what do we do? So it will be likely collaborative conversations across campus. I'm sure senior leadership team will have some focus on this, the board as well, any big picture issues, because we really do need to see what's the next step. So as an example, we're trying out right now digital badging. And digital badging is an opportunity to say, you complete a component of a class, you complete, complete a class, you complete maybe a sequence of classes for say a GE certificate, which you know we're rolling out just this year, or starting to roll out at the end of this year. The badge then is a point of accomplishment that like Guided Pathways, its framework, will keep the student on track. It's an accomplishment, it's incentivizing, it's just like you know when people were in various team, uh, parent, uh, child kind of uh, organizations as kids, you know, you get your little patch on your jacket and you feel like you accomplished something. And so that's the concept behind digital badging. The conversation today among members of the CPC OEI team is, well, how specific do you get? You know, actually point one was what's the budget and how are we going to do it? Second point was the graphic side of it, the digital badges, what they look like, the brand consistency, all that kind of stuff I mentioned earlier. Third point, the level of detail. Do we flood a course or an entire meta major? And badges could be given both to faculty for completion and students. So over time, you think about the number of credentials floating out there, it could literally and figuratively flood the marketplace, the landscape of a class, of a training program, of a meta major, whatever it happens to be. So we'll have to have some conversations about that because the feeling is that you probably don't want to have badges for every single thing in the class, like the student does one paper, they get a badge, then another paper, maybe all the papers in the class, if it's a research type class or a class where writing is a component, and you want to really memorialize that and say, good job to students, you passed this component, now we go into the next you know, component. You know that in the world of work, uh, 21st century work skills kind of stuff, in industry, there's emphasis often on getting a badge because it has a real meaning to it, so certification. So when you open up these badges, I don't have a thing to show you today, but basically you click on it, it has all this metadata embedded in it, which tells everything about what that badge is, how it was earned, a website that it might take, it, take the person to. So if an employer looked at a resume that had badges on it or used the badger program and had kind of that backpack as it's called and open up those badges, the thought is then you could more easily verify what that skill set is, how it was earned and more nuance about that. I think great idea. I, I do think if hiring committees end up doing this, it could be a, a pretty big challenge just in terms of the time commitment and what if you know a badge doesn't have the right link or something like that. But that's stuff we can work out down the road. It really is a key, I think, to, to give it a test drive here with a few limited programs and then see where we might take it in the future. That future piece is to be TBD, TBD in the biggest letters to be determined because I really feel like we have to have more cross-functional conversations across campus before we can even decide on what that next step might look like. Tile Career Connect, uh, Frank Gerdeman, Advance, that whole team there. What an amazing resource. I won't demo this for you today, but it's, it's so cool if you haven't tried it out. This is one of many efforts out there to increase the connection of our students to career opportunities, labor opportunities, living wages, all that kind of stuff that's so important in a community college. Even more important in today's day and age because of the cost of living and some of those food, housing, and security issues we're addressing here on campus through our equity efforts and prosperity center throughout the community. But basically, you can uh, search careers. It will give you real-time data. It will show you job openings. It'll show you regional information. It's really great to use, and graphically, it looks great. So it doesn't. There's no clunkiness to it. I love the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics that's uh, published, but it's not as graphic as this, right? It's more text-based. So this is more fun and I think engaging for our students to take a look at as well as our faculty. The LTCC Teaching and Learning Onboarding Training Experience is also a place where um, through the grant, we're talking about onboarding of faculty, uh, making some efforts to really focus on DE, of course, and some of this is built out just for DE. But in the future, we'll continue to build this out, and this is the website that I maintain and create from scratch. Uh, content, video, training stuff, all that kind of good stuff that you can uh, check out via workshops and any of the other areas. Now, the student experience, and this is really key. I think we've said that 
What's important to us via Guided Pathways and the Promise Program is increasing the touch points between any one student in the college and all its various services. So as it says here, we're focusing on expanding the student experiences, especially those that connect to any career initiatives or Guided Pathways. On the horizon, I anticipate you'll see more workshops with a career focus, more in-depth conversations. If you want to be a firefighter, we'll bring in firefighters and other working professionals. They'll take you through all the aspects of you know, applying um, what it takes to get a job, the training requirements, certifications, all that kind of stuff. And that's getting like the real life experience from people in the field who've done it. So really key. Notable projects, I would say the Coyote kickoff um, pictured here partially. This is, I think, from year one, I believe. Yeah, year two was much more um, expanded. Year um, as well, uh, Coyote Corner, the social media app uh, technology, is a great way to have a virtual student experience. And then Promise and Equity are also heavily involved in all kinds of programming. Um, Julie Booth, in her a previous role as a student uh, life director, now Sean in her new role, there's always been an initiative from that office, and I, I know it'll continue because we really do see that student experiences on a campus are what really become the lifeblood of that campus. It gives it energy, it gives it um, a sense of optimism as we realize it's not just about sitting in classrooms, it's about engaging and connecting with community, making new friends, and, and just really having opportunities to experience the campus and all its persons and all its personnel. So you see here just from year two, this is our Coyote kickoff expanded. We had the tents, we had the t-shirts, the color branding. It gets better every year, which is how you want it to be. This was a really um, hot one here, the um, health and public safety. A lot of folks talking firefighting and paramedic kind of stuff. You see uh, many of our campus personnel there, community personnel. This is President DeFranco from uh, last year, the uh, senior day, which I know will continue. Julie Booth here in her old role, uh, working with uh, a student advising that student. So having a very student-focused experience on campus also gives you media. There are always articles in the newspaper, stuff on the website, stuff on apps, stuff on social media. It's a way we can really leverage, I would say, in the future, is to increase that, as I always say, video um, um, opportunity to connect with communities, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that kind of important stuff. So really great stuff there. You can see our Promise Cohort Day. Look at this big group here. We had our uh, peer navigators as well, and I know we'll continue that effort into the future. We had some bad weather so we didn't get to do our actual um, uh, kayaking on the lake but it was still a really fun experience of team building with Clinton Kalp and others and also just food and fun and speeches and all kinds of cool activities. This is a uh, kind of current picture of the Promise Office. So we have a Promise Director now, we have staff, we have uh, peer navigators. It's a very vibrant space with computers and a lot of hands-on stuff that goes on. I know when I was teaching the Promise class last quarter in fall Boy, it was so many opportunities just to go back and forth between that office. Talk to Julie, talk to Adam, talk to Tony, talk to one of the peer ambassadors, talk to Rocky, because they're the ones um, who understand the ins and outs of the program. And so they're always there as a safety net for our Promise students. This is a new form they developed, and it has the commitment of the college and also the student requirement. And then here, I like this, they're building out all these specifics, it's almost like a routing form when you get a new student, so what programs are you interested in? Would you like to connect with these programs? Veteran, um, Ward of the Court, LGBTQ, Disability Learning Center, etc. Academic goals, earn a degree, transfer to a university certificate in, I'm unsure, and then also on here it talks about what kind of services you would like. Academic support, emotional support, computer, food and security, basic supplies. So this is the kind of sheet then that can be used to really figure out, okay, we know students are gonna need help with their classes, but there are other services that we can provide them, and then we can use this sheet then maybe to better build out our programming, both through our um, activities that we do, our counseling meetings with our counseling faculty, and the first year experience class. So I like this kind of stuff because it really does say that we're growing and figuring things out over time. And then this is the first year experience class. This is Christy here talking to the class. And then we have an activity here with Melanie Chu. This was a really cool activity. So she asked the students by meta major, 
to try to place um, key disciplines, and then there was a whole exercise about information competency and information literacy. Really cool visit, and the first year experience program is something we're building out. There's some stuff that may be happening with um, the faculty who may be teaching that class, and I'll just leave it at that because I know that Allie, myself, and some others are in some conversations, but I think it could be pretty exciting if, if some of these things happen. So I'll just let that kind of simmer there, and we'll, we'll come back to it at a later point. This is the syllabus for the class when I taught it. You can see it here. And then these are all, many of the topics we dealt with. Stress management, careers, information literacy, financial literacy. Financial aid, Naomi sat down with our students and they worked on the app and they submitted their FAFSAs. Learning DE with Treba. Note taking reflections uh, from uh, from my experience, using a calendar, studying, student clubs, equity, work experience, and so forth. So students are getting a really broad picture of the campus. They're making some connections. They're seeing, oh, that's Amber. She's in charge of work experience. Now I know when I need to meet her, I know where her office is, and she's a friendly face, and she already told me about the program. So this is like the LTCC 101 class. And for me, it's one of the, the best things we're doing that's really new, not just in terms of promise, but just in terms of that connection between the student services side of the house and the instruction side of the house. Connecting students with classroom faculty, counseling faculty, of course, and then all the various services on campus. So by the time they've taken this class, they've already met Melanie, they know about the library, and it's like, oh, that step is done. So we've checked that off, and now they go to the next step, which is, hey, Melanie, or one of the friendly librarians, how do I get help with my paper, my research project? So introducing folks to the LTCC experience. I want to say we're all aware of the fact that attending a college is more than just can you afford your books or your tuition, as minimal as it is at a community college like ours. It's about food insecurity and housing insecurity and being homeless and the true cost of education project in the state, all that advocacy, a couple of uh, initiatives, financial initiatives, uh, some of which didn't pass but I know are being taken up at the state level as we speak and our board is doing some efforts I believe with expanding opportunities there from financial aid. Equity is always at the table talking about more money. We're applying for another HSI grant this next year, learning from what we maybe need to improve on in terms of increasing our success to get that grant this year. So we're very aware of this, so now we have to act on that awareness. The equity program is absolutely amazing, what Laura is doing. Um, I've been just so impressed with the program, with the staff, the food pantry growing over time. I could see this, you know, as we expand the, the um, uh, efforts, the uh, space utilization efforts upstairs, I could see this really getting much bigger in terms of just opportunities to expand that program. Mentoring service, quarterly textbook lending, um, lending of computers, laptops at the library, trips to nearby colleges, and of course, important um, food insecurity efforts like the uh, food pantry. So really great that we're doing this um, as an institution. Connected to that, a uh, story here in the paper got cut off here um, about the lease on the Aspen property and how successful that's been just in terms of re recognition that our students need affordable housing. Such an expensive place to live in. If you click on the Tahoe Prosperity Center, you can just go to Tahoe Prosperity Center, Google that. You're going to find all the information about Tahoe data, efforts to unite the community in terms of these partnerships, and then also housing initiatives. So I think you'll be surprised if you don't know this data already, check it out because it's really sobering. And as an instructor in a classroom or a faculty member in another role counseling, it's always just important that we know that our students are facing many of these challenges. And they could be challenges we face depending on our socioeconomic backgrounds as students or that we didn't face. But if we're aware of it, if we're aware of it, then again, we need to act on that awareness and have some conversations about expanding opportunities across the college. Library is such an important uh, function of connecting instruction to library learning uh, resources. And actually, you can click on, so uh, go to LTCC um, 101, and down here you'll see two videos for the library. A short tour with Melanie talking about some of the changes coming in the library. Definitely recommend that. It's a cool tour talking about the space, what it's going to look like. Kind of in real time, she just walked me through what's happening. Some of that you can also get in the Senate President's Report as of late with Al Frangione expressing what's happening with some of that um, space that's going to have some efforts with uh, sound um, deadening and so forth. And then you can also click on this one. It's the, um, well, this is a library main page, so check that out. It tells you all the information about the library. And then this particular video I recorded with Melanie 
Um, and so many of you were so gracious with your time. I do appreciate it going back. And in Melanie's case, I actually like had a microphone issue of all things. And so um, we went back, we shot it twice. And I think it was better the second time for both of us, questions and answers. So uh, we met and we just talked about all the various services and uh, she took us through just what the library does. It's a pretty lengthy video, 27 minutes. So tutoring, um, book lending, stuff that happens in the stacks, how the stacks get purged over time. So I really do recommend this. Having that linkage between the library and instruction and counseling is so key. And we have a librarian who is really focused on student success and faculty experiences and research. And so I think we're in just such a great shape in terms of our library efforts. And additionally, just jump back to my PowerPoint. This is kind of the what's next period of this conversation. So. A lot of this is, it, it should just be a big question mark. I can't speak for the college, I can't speak for your programs, for your meta majors, for what SLT is planning, for what counseling is discussing from the student experience standpoint, from Promise. I'm not in all those meetings, but from what I hear from different departments, different programs, personnel across campus, we're talking about certainly expanding guided pathways beyond what it is. Coyote kickoff probably will happen into the future, but it'll probably get bigger. I think we'll have more of those student experiences connected guided pathways, particularly through our meta majors. I know that Allie and Brad are working on lists of events that'll happen this year in addition to Rowing to America. I believe the art department is doing a film and there could be some others as well. So continue to expand guided pathways more opportunities to work on those maps that we're talking about for giving students a little more uh, initiative up front to say, here's the sequence we want you to complete things in to get out of here in two years. As well, more career opportunities, so expansion of some of the efforts through Advance, through Tile Career Connect, and doing much more in terms of giving students a career-focused perspective here at the college. Expansion of Promise, for sure. We have a full-fledged office now. We've run the first-year experience class uh, four times now. And so I think we've learned from mistakes. We've learned from some of the challenges we have with students, with building cohorts, with experiences, with even data tracking, which is massively crazy. If you go down and talk with Adam and Julie in the Promise office, I mean, the spreadsheets they have on each student, absolutely mind-blowing that this stuff even gets tracked. Um, Elizabeth and her whole team up in um, institutional research and effectiveness, they're always on top of it as well, trying to increase those connections. And what's cool about it is a lot of these programs, because in the past when well, we didn't have an IR office, we didn't have a research office, now we do. And not only do we have one, but then you're seeing that the IR office can liaise or interface with what's going on in Promise or going on with student services. So you're getting more of that cross-functionality because I think we have leadership that promotes it, because I think we have people, personnel willing to do it, and we have projects that, guess what, require cross-functionality. None of these allow for siloing, and that's really great. So my, my tip to everyone out there is if we develop new initiatives in the future, please initiatives like this that really promote cross-functionality, collaboration, effective dialogue, and disagreement, of course, um, between uh, key uh, stakeholders and players on campus. And then more student experiences. So Coyote Kickoff has been wildly successful. Um, I actually, like, it's one of those things, like, I look forward to. Like, I don't know about you, but it's like, oh, wow, there's going to be food, there's going to be music, there's going to be all these cool career tents and picture booths and fun experiences and rock climbing with Clinton and his staff. And I think to expand on that is going to be really incredible opportunities for us and our students. So more student experiences through meta major events, through promise activities, through things that we can use as career engagement seminars through both Pathways, uh, Promise, and of course the CBC OEI grant. So much more on the horizon. I can't of course be definitive about this because it's all to be determined by all of us in, in these kinds of uh, collaborative cross-functional conversations that we'll have. So if you have any questions because this wasn't live, I do apologize for that. It was a scheduling issue. Please, 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 in the comment section below here on this video on YouTube, you'll see right there at the bottom, type in a comment, I'll try to respond, and then what I want to do is use those responses for our next seminar, and just to remind you one more time about that, if you go to workshops, you'll see this on ltccteachinglearning.com. That will be on March 3rd, so Guided Pathways in the Classroom. We will have a conversation, E100 from 12 to 12.45, and and also you can participate on YouTube through the address that I give you on top. Just click there and that'll take you through to the virtual site and that will allow you to 
ask the questions in real time. So it looks like I've got about two comments on my videos, so it's a good opportunity for me to stop this video and say thank you for listening. I'm gonna read those comments and get back to my YouTube and get back to some other videos and ultimately making this video for you so you can watch it. So I appreciate your time. Um, hope for more opportunities to talk about Guided Pathways, Promise, CBC OEI, SEM, student experiences, and all that integration across campus that we know is really good for our students and really good for us in terms of our work here at the college. So thanks for listening. I'll be back with another video in the future. Thank mm -hmm. you.